Good afternoon. On behalf of Commander U.S. Pacific Fleet, welcome to the 27th Rim of the Pacific Exercise, RIMPAC 2020. I'm Vice Admiral Scott Kahn, Commander U.S. Third Fleet, and the 2020 RIMPAC Commander. Before I get begin, I want to thank the state of Hawaii and local communities for the continued support of the Navy in allowing us to conduct this training. It is so critical to ensuring a free and open Indo-Pacific region. I want to say up front that everything we are doing for RIMPAC has been carefully and deliberately planned to ensure everyone's safety. As you may know, RIMPAC 2020 will be an at-sea only exercise due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. This construct was developed to ensure the safety of the citizens of Hawaii and all the sailors embarked on the ships participating this year. I want to quickly highlight some of the COVID-19 measures we have put in place for RIMPAC 2020 and that's the only exercise to help safeguard against COVID-19. A 14-day quarantine and negative COVID-19 test were required for all U.S. ships who traveled to Hawaii. If needed, U.S. ships will be able to conduct COVID-19 tests at sea. Similarly, some of our partner nation ships will have testing capability. There is no plan to bring COVID-19 specimens ashore. If an emergency med medical situation arises that exceeds a ship's ability to resolve, on-island military facilities have sufficient capability to medically support RIMPAC 2020. We do not plan to use any local healthcare resources. When you see ships pier side and pearl, it's because they are taking on fuel, food, or other supplies. Their sailors will not leave those piers, nor will they have any contact with anyone on those piers. We have limited number of personnel supporting RIMPAC ashore. In 2018, our exercise control group was made up of roughly 600 people. For RIMPAC 2020, we've pared that down to less than 100 people. And all of those 100 people completed a 14-day quarantine at a military installation, and all have presented a negative COVID-19 test. Originally, RIMPAC 2020 had planned to include up 30 countries, more than 50 ships and submarines more than 200 aircraft and 25,000 personnel, 4,000 of those which were gonna operate ashore. That would have been the largest RIMPAC to date. We obviously have scaled that down to 10 nations, 22 ships, one submarine, and approximately 5,300 personnel, all who will remain at sea or on ships. Now that I have discussed how we are tackling the challenge of COVID-19, I wanna talk a little bit about the exercise itself. The flags you see behind me represent a formidable team of 10 navies from Australia, Brunei, Canada, France, Japan, New Zealand, Republic of Korea, Republic of the Philippines, Singapore, and the United States, all of whom will spend the next two weeks training through a series of events designed to improve our ability to operate together. This year, we will focus solely on warfighting in the maritime domain to include anti-surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare, and maritime interdiction operations, as well as some robust live fire events. During all the at-sea events, all partner nations understand the importance of preserving and protecting the unique maritime environment that makes it so special. RIMPAC represents a unique opportunity to strengthen relationships and build trust. The work we'll do here will make us more capable and adaptive ready to meet any challenge, be it a threat to international commerce and prosperity or a natural disaster that requires a response from the sea. In spite of COVID-19, the world has not stopped, nor have the demands for the free flow of commerce across the world's oceans. Our collective prosperity depends on this, and we need to continue safeguarding it. While we have the ability to surge ships and people we cannot surge trust. In times of crisis, whether man-made or natural disasters, the time to establish interoperability and forge key relationships is not in the midst of a crisis response. We want to have those personal relationships and trust already well established. That is why we continue to conduct RIMPAC exercises every two years. That is why we made the calculated decision to proceed with RIMPAC 2020 to demonstrate to ourselves and the world that our navies and nations have the resolve to come together in times of crisis. I can speak on everyone's behalf in saying that we will certainly miss the interactions we typically have with a community. However, we are not gonna be able to do that this year. 
the health and safety of the citizens of Hawaii, as well as our U.S. and partner nation sailors, is our priority. I am honored to lead this exercise, and I am proud of all the men and women who are at sea as I speak, ready to make RIMPAC 2020 a success. We received several questions from the press, which I will answer, answer separately in written form. I again want to thank the state of Hawaii for their continued support. Without it, we wouldn't have this opportunity to train together as partners and allies. Thank you.